Let's talk about the life cycle of changing a route. So we're on the kind of the root URL here. So we just loaded up this app template, which is simply this. Uh, so an H1 with a change route. So when we click on that change route, it's going to fire up this change route. And that's going to change the location to slash new. And that'll take us here. Load up the new template after the resolve, uh, after the promises have resolved. We just have this promise, you know, waiting for two seconds. And it'll resolve with an object passing along a message. And then we'll show how it kind of goes through this route change start and route change success. So basically step one is going to be before we even start the route change. Uh, step two is when it starts. Step three is when it successfully changed. And step four is when the uh, new controller has been instantiated. So if I go ahead and click on this, you can see that uh, nothing has really happened here. I just want to show that the uh, the path hasn't changed. Um, so we're at a point where if you want to do something before the path changes, here's your chance. Uh, you're not going to get another one. So we'll continue on. You can see now that we're at the route change start. The path has changed, so you're too late if you want to do something before the path has changed. And now you can see we have... Um, current and previous objects we can inspect uh, from the route change start event. So the current means we're going to the current one, which is going to be this new uh, route with a new controller. And it's mapped to that resolve, waiting for that promise. And the previous actually has um, you know, very similar things, the template URL, the controller. It has something called locals with a template and a scope and everything. So that the reason those are different is because this hasn't been set up yet for the route change success. So if we kind of play through this, so it's waiting one, two, because you know we waited two seconds. Um, you can see that now on the current, we'll have something called locals. So now we have a load data object. Uh, which is with a message of success because that is this object here which is mapped to load data here so that's why it's called load data and we have a template which has been loaded and parsed um, from this template URL and now it's ready to go into the part where it'll, where it'll instantiate the new controller but if you look back at here you can see that the template hasn't rendered yet, you know, that everything hasn't been fired up and changed visually. Um, you're at a point before that happens, but the uh, route has successfully changed, so it's kind of prepared to do what it does next, which is going to be uh, create all this stuff, and it can actually, um, you can see we're going to inject load data and, te and template. So if I run this again, you can see that load data is ready because it was done on that locals. Um, and the template is ready uh, if, if you wanted to uh, see that for any reason. So basically that's uh, how it kind of walks through uh, before you change it. That's really your only chance before the path changes. Once it starts up, that's before any of the promises have been resolved. Uh, it knows where it's going, it knows where it's come from, but it doesn't have anything ready to uh, instantiate the new controller. And then when it's successfully changed, then that's your point uh, before the UI is updated. Uh, it has everything ready. And then once that's done, um, it'll jump down here and instantiate the controller. And you'll have uh, basically the process is done. So that's the life cycle of a route changing.